It is a great time to be into cocktails. Anything you can think of, you can get. The amount of bitters and syrups and tinctures and just about anything compared to just a few years ago. There are shops you can go to, you can get it online. And even though you don't have to make your own syrups or these kinds of things at home, it's still fun to play around with it. I've made my own tonic syrups and infusions and cordials and things like that. And today I thought I would try something that, two things actually I've always wanted to try. One is to make cocktail ingredients with uh, sous vide. And the other is to make my own vermouth. Vermouth is something that I, I absolutely love. I thought, why not try to make my own? That's what we're gonna do today. It's an experiment and uh, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, let's give it a try. Okay, let's see what we have here. Since vermouth is a fortified wine that's infused with herbs and fruits and all kinds of things, we have to start with wine. So we have that. And then I have some anise, some dried orange peel, some fresh lemon and orange zest. We have some cardamom pods, coriander, cinnamon, juniper berries, that's chamomile, thyme, lavender, and a vanilla pod. I'm also gonna try to use some hop bitters because I have them and one of the recipes I found called for hops. So we're gonna try that and then there's some brandy and some sherry to put in at the end to fortify the whole thing. This is our setup. I basically combined a couple of recipes online. It's basically the same thing I did when I first made tonic syrup. I found a couple of recipes and I used the things I liked and took out a few things I didn't like. I also have my sous vide, my immersion circulator going, set to 160 Fahrenheit, we're almost there. So we're gonna put it in there in a mason jar for four hours and we'll see how it goes. have our jar in the water. I think it would be okay without the bowl on top, but we're gonna leave it there just so it doesn't move around. 160 Fahrenheit for four hours, and we'll check back in a little bit. Well, it took me more than four hours, but I'm back, and I have vermouth. You know, on the whole, I am very happy with how it turned out. I'd say the biggest mistake I made had to do with the sherry I used wasn't quite sweet enough, so I, it came out really, really dry. And I don't mind dry, but it actually didn't taste balanced. Even if you have like a dry vermouth, there's still some sweetness there that you need. So I went back once I had it all finished and strained and I'd mixed in the brandy and the sherry. I actually took one of the recipes I'd found, went back to it, made some caramel with some sugar and some water, and added that to it to balance out the sweetness. And what I have now is really not like any vermouth I've ever had, not that I've had that many, and it definitely has some of those aromas and flavors that I associate with vermouth. The things I'm mostly getting out of it are the chamomile, the orange, the lavender. Now, I could probably stand to have more vanilla for my taste, maybe even a bit more of the cinnamon, some of those spicier things. But again, on the whole, I'm really happy with it. Yesterday I tried making one of my favorite Manhattan variations with it, the Red Hook, which is just rye, vermouth, and Luxardo maraschino liqueur. And given this, that this isn't quite as sweet as a standard typical vermouth you buy in the store, 
I did up the maraschino a bit and it worked out. It was, it tasted balanced. It was good. It was definitely a different drink though. I think if you gave it to somebody and asked them what it was, you know, if they really knew their drinks, they might've guessed a Red Hook, but it definitely had some different qualities. And that got me thinking about another one of my favorite Manhattan variations, the Brooklyn. And that's made with rye, vermouth, maraschino liqueur, and Kina Kina. Originally it was made with a mer picon, but that's almost impossible to find in North America these days. And Kina Kina has this great like bitter orange kind of flavor, and it's a really nice cocktail. And it's traditionally made with dry vermouth, and I've had some very good ones made with dry vermouth, uh, but I do find it a little dry sometimes, and it also works really nicely with like a Bianco, a white sweet vermouth. But then that ends up being almost too sweet sometimes, so I think this, which is somewhere in the middle, might be really good in that cocktail. So we're gonna try to make that now and find out together. Okay, so here is everything I need for a Brooklyn. I have my rye, I'm gonna use Old Overhaul. Got my vermouth. Uh, Luxardo maraschino, the Kina Kina, and I'm gonna try using these Chinook bitters from Bittered Sling in Vancouver. I think they might be a nice addition to this. So let's give this a try. Oh, and I do wanna say about these two, you know, th uh, these are both great things to keep on hand because they might cost a little more expensive in their, to buy one bottle, but you're only using like a quarter ounce or a bar spoon at a time. And so they're really good, they're really versatile. So we have, do a few drops of our Chinook bitters. This calls for two ounces of rye, maybe a little less. Uh, I'm gonna go with about 1.75 ounces because I really do want the, the vermouth to stand out here. So we're gonna go with three quarter ounce of the vermouth. And then it's gonna be a quarter ounce each of the Luxardo. And our Kina Kina. I'm going to add some ice. Again, I like to fill it up quite a bit. The level of the ice is gonna go down as you stir. I'm gonna give this a good stir. I'm gonna taste. Uh -huh. I have a glass that was filled with ice, chilling. And here we go. Do a lemon zest for this guy. I'm going to give this a taste. Yep, you know that's really good. And that is, you know, I'm gonna keep experimenting with how I can use this vermouth, but that is a really, really good option. It's made that drink perfectly balanced to where I want it. It's not too dry, it's not too sweet. It has those aromatics, this rye, uh, sorry, this vermouth plays really, really well with the Kina Kina, and I'm really happy with that, and I'm really glad I thought to try that. Now this whole experience, this whole experiment has been really good. Not only do I, did I learn a whole bunch about how what things I would, might do differently next time, definitely making sure I have it sweet enough, all those kinds of things, but being able to smell and taste something that I made and I know exactly what I put into it helps me then identify those same flavors in other vermouths and I can say oh I like this vermouth because it has a lot of chamomile or doesn't have a lot of chamomile or this one has too much vanilla or this one's too sweet not sweet enough that'll help me start to identify the vermouths I like and don't like and will help me make a better product one day and maybe even make different kinds so again I started this video talking about how how this is a great time to be somebody who's interested in cocktails because of the amount of things that you can buy and what's available and how easy it is to get them compared with a few years ago. But it's still fun to play around with these with these things on your own. You have something that no one else has, you're gonna learn a little bit and you're gonna impress your guests and maybe even yourself as, as I did making this bottle of my very own vermouth. So thanks for, uh, thanks for watching this uh, slightly different video. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers.